All right, guys. So today we have Steve Paulsonella with us. How you doing, man? Good. How you doing? So uh, Steve and I briefly met maybe half a year ago. It turned out actually, so I'm working and I see this massive individual come in, and uh, I asked you because I, I recognize the last name, and I said, "Are you related to Mike Paulsonella?" And you said he was your cousin, right? Right. And I knew that he had done some of the films with Ty Green and some of these other lifters. Um, and then you had mentioned, I knew you had done like obviously a huge lifting background. Mm -hmm. So you told me about your gym and then I looked on your Instagram and I saw the, do you even lift meme, which I'll include in here at some point. <laughs> and I saw that meme, like, I, mean, I don't know how old that is, 10 years? Probably, probably about 10 years, yeah. I saw that and like, that was just a hilarious meme that stuck out in my head. And the <laughs> fact that that guy was my patient, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, it was, it was like mind blowing for me. It was so funny. Um, so this is my first time checking out the gym, so you want to tell us a little bit about what you have here? Well, we started out uh, in 1995, that's when we incorporated and opened up, and it was a small little gym, it was up the street actually, it was just like a size of a two and a half car garage, I guess, and it was a little key club, it was just a place when I was doing um, straw man, I was competing heavily, I needed a better place to work out than little health clubs that were around, so yeah. me and my brother put together a little place with some bumper plates and platforms and lots of weights, and just no rules, anything we, you know, we wanted to do in yeah. there. And uh, we let other guys join up to defray costs, really. I mean, really kind of put it together for me. But uh, it kind of caught on. We didn't have a sign or anything. It was just like an underground kind of thing. And yeah. guys loved it. And uh, this, this building we're in now became available after about four years of us being in the little place. And I said, you know, if we're this successful in this little place, let's extrapolate that into a big place. Yeah. And we'll probably actually make money. Of course, I was wrong, but we got into the big place anyway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, early on, we were one of the first, like, commercial yet strength based gyms like back then it was just you know chain gyms yeah. and bodybuilding gyms and all there wasn't really like you see now you see a lot of them but back then you didn't see that like we were the first gym that had like you know bumper plates available to people and like good Alico bars and straw man equipment yeah. and stones and things like that no one had that back then now i see them in every gym every health yeah. club every crossfit gym has all that stuff but right and also early on in the early 90s, my brother was really into making websites. Back when you had to really know your shit to make a website. Yeah, right. You know, you had to actually know like HTML and all that. Yeah. Um, he started a website for us that was one of the few gym websites out there at the time. It was just, I mean, early on the internet, it was just basically porn and shit like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> porn in the news. Yeah. And then there was our, our gym website that became really popular, you know, because a lot of people hit on it. So we got a real good following, a real good name, you know, even around the world and, and nationwide from all that. Yeah. Plus, I was competing, you know, internationally, and I was right. always, I was always competing. I was in the, some of the magazines, and yeah. you know, started popping up other strength websites and stuff. So, you know, we just kind of surfed in on that that yeah. Uh, wave. Yeah, I mean, it looks. I mean, it's obviously at some point we'll. Uh, I'll just scan around the gym so everybody watching can see. Um, obviously, right now, due to the whole issue going around the world, you're currently closed, which has been maybe almost a month now. No, almost two months. Now. Almost two months. Yeah. It's wow. No, it's coming up. Yeah, it's coming up in a month. And by the time we open it, maybe two months. I'm hearing, but I don't know. We'll, yeah. Still so don't know yet, so. it's obviously crazy. But if anybody is in, I mean, even anywhere like Pennsylvania or Jersey, you should check out this gym. Um, other people that have been on the show, Mike Isertel, and he's been here a lot. Mike's a member here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul Canu has been here. There's a lot mm -hmm. of pictures on Instagram with him yeah. here. Um, it's, it's an awesome gym. So you should definitely check it out if you're in the area. So you mentioned that you were competing. Give us a little bit of history there. I mean, obviously, you're a big guy. I know you've had some crazy lifts. So well, I mean, the history of my, my my competitive history anyway was, you know, I started lifting really young. I was like 13, 12 or 13. I did my first powerlifting meet at 14. Wow. And um, I powerlifted from 14 to about till I was about 24 or so. Okay. And uh, I did a, a lot of contests in that 10 year period. I used to, I used to compete all the time, so yes. I had 100 contests. Um, Do you remember your best uh, platform lifts? In a meet? No, let's just say uh, ever. My best squat ever was 755, I think. And that's just with a belt and knee wraps in the gym. And I benched 505 in the gym, and I deadlifted 765. Nice, man. But there were some other heavier things I've lifted and pulled and pushed and stuff in meets. I think, yeah, right? yeah. Um, then, then after I was when I was 24, I took a hiatus there because I had like I had two young kids at the time. I just oh. started my family really young, and I still lifted, but I didn't compete for four or five years. And then I started doing strongman stuff in my late 20s. When really the, the sport of strongman was only in Europe before that, there was nothing in right. this country from like the early '80s to the early '90s. Absolutely nothing was going on strongman-wise. Yeah. yeah, so some early contests started popping up, and I saw some advertisements for them. So I, 
you know, I started competing in those, and they were pretty cool. I won every contest I ever was in, except for the World's really? Finals, man. Yeah. Wow. I was only in a, a few before I started doing, started doing Highland Games. Yeah. Then I did Highland Games for like almost 20 years. That yeah. was really my main sport that right. I really focused on after that. So. so for people who don't know, what are the differences? Obviously, there's a pretty big difference between like, people who do bodybuilding and then powerlifting, powerlifting, and then strongman. What's the difference between strongman and the Highland Games? Strongman and the Highland Games. Highland Games is a, a very old sport, a very old traditional Scottish sport. We always have to, we have to wear kilts when we compete yeah. and everything. And, um, it's all throwing events. So it's all like the stuff you see kind of track and field-ish, um, but much heavier. And we, it's anywhere from, it can be anywhere from five events to maybe nine events they, they will contest, hmm. like hammer throws and a shot put with a booze of stone and yeah. some heavy weight throws and things like that. And of course the caber, which is the big, Telephone yeah. pole, you see the guys toss. Right. Um, straw man is more brute strength oriented, pushing, pulling, deadlifting, pressing overhead, long yeah. stones, barrels, and all that. So it's a little different. The Highland Games is a little more skill involved, mm. but you're doing the same events every week, whereas straw man, too, every contest you go into is a slightly different uh, gotcha. array of events. Did you find you were better? Like, what was your best? The Highland was probably your best. I was one. better at the Highland Games because I wasn't quite big enough. I'm just barely over six feet tall. I just wasn't, I didn't have the stature to be a real, real good world player straw man. Yeah. I was only about 300 pounds. When I went to the world's strongest man, I was 300. Coincidentally, the guy that won that year was the exact same size as me. Really? Magnus, Magnus and me and him were the same height, just about, and the same weight. But the other guys there were just absolutely mammoth. And the guys today are just sure. far and above what those guys even were. I mean, the, the events now, I mean, some of the weights in that contest I was in, women do today in amateur meets. Seriously, really? our farmer's walk weights were 205. <laughs> 205. <laughs> They're doing like 450, 500 pounds almost now. That's insane. The heaviest stone, I think, in the stone series they had was only 300 pounds. That, it is. Like amazing. 300 pounds is literally in women's contests they use those. Do that, yeah. yeah. I, I can't say I've followed a ton of like the women competitions, but it is insane to see. I guess part of it is people doing it for longer, people getting more consistent with it, but also the more popular any sport gets. You see this with a lot of sports that weren't very popular and they get more and more popular. You have these genetic freaks that kind of come out, right? Yeah, you mean, get the top and, of the top. That and they're just, all coming out of the woodwork now. Yeah. I mean, this last you know, five or six years, you see guys like Brian Shaw and Thor, they're just you know, six, eight, six, Did you nine, see Thor's six, deadlift this past weekend? Yeah, yeah, I saw them. Insane. You know, yeah. So people who don't know, he, he just hit 501 kilograms, which I think is 11. He's a young guy still, relatively. He's yeah, going to keep getting stronger. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Uh, so he's got a lot to go. Man. Have he's you seen the beef with him and Eddie Hall? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently they might have a boxing match. I don't know <laughs> why anybody would watch those two guys fight. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I mean, I wouldn't want to fight either of them, but no, it's not going to be a visually exciting No, fight, it's I not. Think. But I, I, I mean, I, I'd watch it. <laughs> it's going to be like two guys just trying to guess As how. Breath, yeah. right, whoever's got the better cardio. Throwing haymakers at each other. I don't know. Who's, I don't know. I guess it's going to be a pay-per-view or something. Yeah, apparently, right? I mean, well, you think about it with the lockdowns and everything. Thor's unofficial or official, I guess, depending on who you're asking, um, deadlift was like one of the biggest sporting events, right? It had. It so was many the people. only live sporting event that's been on TV in right. quite a while. Yeah. So things like, like ESPN's now showing like frisbee throwing, really? and I got the weird. Like I'm like, oh my god, yeah. I actually like it better. Yeah, yeah, I like it better than college basketball. I know that. Yeah. Um, what was I going to ask? Oh, do you know? So people will often see that really good bodybuilders don't necessarily make the best powerlifters and vice versa, right? Of course, if you have a ton of muscle, you're still gonna be strong, but there's certainly plenty of examples where guys who are really aesthetic, they might not be super strong and vice versa. Would you say though that most of powerlifting transfers over to strongman and Highland, or would you say they're actually still pretty different? Like some people who are great at powerlifting might not be so good at strongman. There have been world-class powerlifters that have gone into Highland Games meets and have been thoroughly embarrassed by really? very thin, skinny guys. Really? <laughs> like I said, it's if you don't know what you're doing. Like I went to my first Highland Games, and you compete as an amateur first, and most of the amateur guys are smaller, you yeah. know. And there's the pro guys on the other side of the field, and a bunch of big guys. Well, here I was, just off the World's Strongest Man contest on 305 pounds or so. I compete with these tiny little guys who dusted me. I got beat by a guy that looked like Santa Claus with a big gray beard. He was chain smoking all day. Really? Beat my ass in my first Highland Games meet. I'm like, man, this is an eye opener. Wow. I should be over there with them giant pro guys. Yeah. I'm over here getting beat by these tiny little amateur guys. Luckily for me, though, I had a real good knack for it, and I, 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 I learned real quick and had yeah, the a couple guys that really were, were good teachers too, so that helped me out a lot. And I became a pro like right away, like within yeah. four or five amateur meets. Well, that's what's interesting, I think, because it's interesting, like powerlifting not transferring immediately to strongman, I can see because there's almost, not there's a skill component to powerlifting, of course, but it's not these dynamic movements like strongman. Right. I would have thought more so if you're great at strongman, you'd be great at highland, but I guess it's still there a are, There are a lot of guys that, that, that sneak over. I mean, there are a lot of guys that do, I mean, back in the day, they, all the strongmen, 
especially like the 80s era, like John Paul Singerson and Capes and all guys, they all did both. Yeah. Because the, the people who were running Strongman back then were Scottish Highland Games promoters. Right. So they would have exactly. them over to various games in Scotland and bigger games over there. And those guys were really good. Like Sid Marshall was good. Kazmaier even did a bunch of Highland yeah. Games over there. They, you know, they, they kind of had to. They made them do yeah, it, even right. though they kind of foolish at first, I guess. <laughs> So what do you see? I know you've mentioned on your Instagram before. I, I couldn't find it actually. I was looking for it recently. There was a picture of you, I think, with Dave Tate, and you were talking about how you know not that long ago you were writing articles. I think for Elite FTS, mm -hmm. and how it's so different even just from ten years ago. Oh yeah. And you know, while I am a young guy, I've actually been lifting as well since I was twelve years old, and so I've seen the culture change. And I saw where it was forums and Elite FTS. I always look at the Q and A on there, mm -hmm. and and now it's you know I. I've seen positive changes. It's good that things are getting exposure, but I've also seen a lot of negative changes where you have people on who, they're basically just social media stars and they haven't necessarily done a lot. Right. And that's where a lot of the, like, the people are getting their information. So what are some of the frustrating challenges that you've seen over the years? Or not even, just some of the changes you've seen. Right. So most of the changes you see now, and a lot of things like, when I talk to guys like Dave Tate, I'll talk to Ed Cohen, I'll talk to Kirk Kowalski. The one thing that just gets under everybody's skin is anybody with an Instagram account now is a fucking expert. Yeah. When back in the day, you had to actually pay real dues. Mm -hmm. You know, Dave had to go up through, you know, working out at West Side and have Louis Simmons, you know, yeah. basically make an ass of him and work your way up and then try to get yourself in with the crowd of the, of the better lifters and, lit, and train at night where the good lifters were instead of like the secondary lifters and things like that, you know. And Cohen started when he was a little kid and worked his way up, all these guys. And now all you gotta have is an Instagram account and right. you're, you're basically, you're fucking insta famous and all. Again, I don't really care, but I'm just saying that's the real big difference. Is yeah. people are actually, you know, have have huge followings who really haven't done shit. Yeah. You know, girls that are kind of pretty and they lift, but they're not really, you know, yeah. anything in the lifting world. But now they're giving everybody advice and people are like asking them questions like they're experts. Yeah. Now whether those the answers are good or not, I really don't know. But that's the real thing that seems to irk a lot of the old timers. It's like sure. powerlifting back then was was a, such an underground thing. Right. And if you went to a powerlifting meet. Everybody there was strong. Yeah. I mean, it was like you didn't go to a power meet unless you were a, a guy who lifted weights for a bunch of years and was strong. And now you go to a meet and there's like three strong guys and 200 people that aren't strong at all. Yeah. Again, it's open for everybody. It's fine and everything. But that's really the difference is like it's not like that under, underground thing like it used to be. You know? Sure. Yeah. And, and I've heard a lot of people talk about there's great camaraderie in powerlifting. And so I imagine it's nice that you can go somewhere and you can have a lot of support, even if you're, you know, if you're a couple years in. You probably are weak at that point, but you are getting that support as right. long as you kind of understand. I don't want to say like your place, but you understand where you are in your progression. You know that you haven't right. been doing it for twenty years, and certainly, obviously, on Instagram, you see it with women all the time. Definitely more support now than there was back in the days. I yeah. remember you go to meets, you know, when I was back in the eighties and everything, and you went to the warm up room, you got like trash, and then you'd be a couple of guys there on this bench, and you try to work. Hey, can I work? They're like, get lost, kid. Really? Get lost. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're gonna be like, you know, a bunch of blacks and a bunch of whites, and be like some sort of racial thing right. tension going on. Like, you'd be like, I've been to meets where that was happening. And we're like, oh shit, man, these guys really? are gonna like go at it any minute now. Yeah, <laughs> damn. We used to go to meets where these bunch of guys who just got out of like greater for prison used to have this team, and those guys are rolling the meets, and they were nasty, man. They were really? just like scary, nasty guys. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I haven't, it's interesting because that I you know obviously haven't experienced that, but I haven't even really heard of that side of it too much. But I could see that you know, especially something that was so underground, you probably had you know groups of people that were very tight knit, and then yeah. another group came They're in. It was like gangs. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> you roll to meet there's gangs there in the world. <laughs> yeah, the uh, something I've, I've talked to a lot of people about though, some of the coaches of today is that especially with women, you see it where you know a pretty face or a nice butt gets you tons and tons of followers. Right. And um, you know, I used to know a girl who we, we were pretty close, and she. She got into, I mean, she was already like a D1 athlete, but you know, she, athletes often don't know that much if they're just getting coached by their college, like right, their yeah. coach. And so she lost some weight, she got into powerlifting, and within six months, she put in our Instagram powerlifting coach. And it was just like, I just gave her so much shit for it because I was like, what are you doing? Like, just because, and she was successful with it because she had some pretty solid genetics, but it was just like, you don't know in six months what you're doing. You, you no. know, barely had to coach yourself, you know, it's so, it's kind of unfortunate that it's so accessible, I think. It's very common now for that to ha happen in bodybuilding. My, my cousin Dave's a bodybuilder, he's a prep coach, you mm -hmm. know, and he says the same thing. It's like, you know, there used to be like, prep coaches used to be guys who really walked the walk yeah. and really paid the dues and, and knew their shit, and now every girl that does two-figure shows is a prep coach, you right, know, and it's right. like, you know, it cuts, it cuts into the real guys who really do it well, yeah. you know, and, and it cuts into their money, and 
it makes everybody look stupid in the process. And the same thing's how the power thing. When I tell power coaches today that, you know, six years ago, there's no such thing as a fucking power thing coach. Yeah. Because it was such an easy sport to learn. Yeah. You didn't need a power <laughs> thing coach. But now everybody needs a power I think it's like a badge of honor. It's like, oh, uh, like people come in here, they call me or send me messages like, yeah, I want to join your gym. Um, I'm being coached by so-and-so. I'm like, I don't know who the fuck that is. And then I look it up. I'm like, hey, you know your coach? Total... 50 pounds less than the first total I did when I was 14. Yeah. And he's like 250 pounds. Like, this is your coach? You know? And they just have no concept. They don't understand. They just right. know this guy has 30,000 Instagram followers, you know, yeah. and he's coaching me. And, and they run around and they get on the internet. Oh, my coach is killing me today. Oh, my coach is trying to, you know, that, that little bullshit thing they yeah, all do. Sure. Like, it's, come on, man. Nobody cares. I think you also see it from the other side, too. So I know when I first reached out to you about talking, and you had meant, I mean, you kind of warned me, you said, you know, I'm not like some of these like sciencey guys, yeah. right? And to me, even from that side though, those people actually have the same complaints. What I mean by that is like, so my, one of my professors, who's kind of like my mentor in undergrad, um, he, so Dr. Nicholas Radimus, I've mentioned him on the podcast before, he's a huge guy. So he's probably 250, um, he's yeah. deadlifted. 250? Well. <laughs> huge? If you saw him, he's a pretty big guy. It's like um, high school weight. <laughs> So he's deadlifted, I think, 700 for three, benched maybe 450, and I forget his squat. But, you know, I mean, he, he definitely walks the walk, right? But he's published also, like, over 100 journal articles. So he's very much in the science side. And you see that with a lot of these guys who, you know, they do get their PhD. And, and I could certainly see an argument for maybe somebody like you versus, let's say, a guy who doesn't lift but gets his PhD. I don't think there's anything wrong with the science -y stuff. I just, it's just not my thing. I just, right. You know, it's boring. But, but those, those same guys will even say that, like, you know, whereas you're, you have so much experience with like competing and lifting. They'll say, well, we have so much experience with like the science stuff. Right. And they're also annoyed by the guys on Instagram who have maybe done a year of looking stuff up. Oh, and sure. and, and yeah. so either way, it's like, whether it's the research side or it's the competing side, and obviously some people do both, mm -hmm. you know, it's probably very frustrating to have somebody who has been doing this for almost no time. And even, you know, for me, obviously I'm nowhere near as strong as him and I haven't published papers like Dr. Rashid. Yeah, you probably are. <laughs> Let up both the beat up. No <laughs> but, but even so, like I've, I have had conversations with Dave T. I've been around it a long time and yeah. I've at least seen it. So I do see where the frustration comes from, where it's like, and, and I'm sure when I was 14, I thought I knew a lot more than I did. Yeah, you never, you don't have any idea the level though, because unless you talk to them, off camera, yeah, you know? probably, like, probably. Yeah. Then, I've, I've <laughs> talked to uh, Kirk Kowalski. Kirk Kowalski's having the worst of all of them. Yeah. He is bitter. <laughs> he is so bitter. He's like so, you know, vocal about it. When you yeah. talk to him, just I can see why. I mean, he's he was an accomplished lifter. You know, today he talked about Kirk Kowalski and his new lifters. Like, who's that? Yeah, they don't care. They don't know. You know, they have no idea. Meanwhile, they're worshiping some guy that can't squat his you know warm up weights. Right, right. Do you think that there's any? Do you think that's going to change at all, or do you think it's just going to keep progressing down? There? I don't think it's going to change. <laughs> you know, it's just it's going to if it does progress to be anything weirder, I can can't imagine what that would be. You know? Right. right. I, I'm I'm so out of touch. Again, a lot of us are really out of touch. Like when when I first started the gym, I had good instincts for this business. You yeah. know what I mean? I was really in touch with what was going on because yeah. I was still relevant. You know, and it wasn't like all this social media stuff that really right. really changed a lot of things for us. And uh, now I have no instincts for this at all. Like I have no idea. Like I'll come up with a shirt design I think looks good, and I'll put it out there, and no one will buy it. Yeah. And then I'll look and see what the stuff people are buying. I'm like, you really just bought a shirt with a unicorn deadlifting over a <laughs> rainbow? Like what the fuck is that? But they sold 10 million of them. I'm like, I would never, in my wildest imaginations. Like yeah. even like um, Mark Bell's um, yeah. slingshot. Right. When I first saw that, I'm like, this is stupid. Who would want that thing? Yeah. Little did I know. Really? She goes to show you what I know, right? I mean, I just, I just thought I'm like, eh, it's a kind of a neat little thing, but right, obviously I can't imagine popular. anybody buying those things, but they did. <laughs> I think, um, and even like for me, like I'm a little bit out of touch because I'm, I'm not big on social media at all, really. I mean, I'm trying to in the sense that like I, I like this podcast. Because you have a life. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a life. So. I, uh, but obviously, my full time gig is I'm a dentist, right? right? So I am fortunate enough that it's not. You know, whether I have some success on Instagram or YouTube or whatever or not, it doesn't really impact my livelihood. There's no such thing as success on Instagram, really. Yeah, well, that's the thing. There's always what's the next thing. And, and yeah. so, but even I will see it and I'll be amazed. Like, I had a friend in South Carolina and she, when I first met her, she wasn't really doing anything on Instagram. And it's now just about a year later, you know, big fake boobs, makeup and everything. She's got like 
three hundred thousand followers. Really? And, <laughs> and it's it's like how how does that happen? But I think you just have to kind of realize like you see you know how it happens. It's a fake boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's it is kind of bizarre though, and it, I think it's annoying whether you're from like the scientific evidence based crowd or the you know really like in the trenches crowd. Either way, it's kind of like what is happening now that you know pretty face or you know Photoshop or you know whatever right. gets you there. And a lot of filters, a lot of filters. Yeah, and so I don't I don't really know. <laughs> so for the people who let's say are really just want to hear from somebody who's who's been there and done it you know obviously we can't get into like all of training programming or anything but if somebody's just like you know i still want that side i still want to do strong man or something like that just a basic like how would you even get started because you got started so young right so it's a little different i now. started before it was really an organized sport you know now it's a little more organized like you yeah. have a website and all the contests are listed there and um Every, you know, every state's got a bunch of contests and things like that. Right. So now it's easy. You just go onto the NAS website, you know, or the amateur side, and you know, you pick it. You pick a contest, and then you find out all right, what events are going to be in this contest. Then you go to whatever gym you can, or you build your own equipment and train those events. You yeah. Know? And there's a million uh, YouTube videos out there showing you how to loop do stones and how to properly lift a log right. and how to properly do a yoke walk and all that. So it's not really that hard. I mean, it's not. Yeah. Highland Games a little different. It's hard to really teach yourself that stuff. So what I always tell people when I want to get into the Highland Games is, you know, they have a there's a couple Highland Games uh, message boards out there, like websites and stuff. Put a shout out or put a shout out on Facebook for any local groups of guys. Because usually guys will train on the weekends and it, you know, four or five guys will go out with equipment to train. You know, find that group of guys hopefully near yeah. you and hook up with them and they're always accommodating. It's one of those sports where no one's really paying a coach to teach. It's always been handed down. It's very mm -hmm. traditionally, you know, it has been handed down to me by a, a friend of mine, Paul Ferenczi, down to me. I've handed it down to many people and I actually have a girl here now who's one of the top women in the world in Highland Games. Really? I started her off in games. I took her and coached her her first few, first few games and she goes all over the world now and competes. She's, really? Yeah, she's wow. real with awesome. She's very good. Well, and that is one thing that I think is good about nowadays, it was more so, I guess, YouTube, but I guess Instagram too, is that you really do have access to some of the best in the world. Yeah, that's you, the one thing now that's different. Yeah. When I was a kid, you couldn't just say, yeah, I want to talk to the world champion. Yeah. Uh, how do I get a hold of him? No, you can, you can put a, you know, shoot a message to Ed Cohen and he'll answer you. you yeah. know? I mean, he, he's real responsive. Or, you know, Bill Kazmaier, those guys, you can, they're, they're right at your fingertips yeah. now. And it's crazy because they're not big money guys. They're not right. big, it's not like trying to get a hold of Michael Jordan. You know right, I mean? These right. guys are accessible because they're just hanging around most of the day yeah. or doing their job and they're sitting there on his, you know, Instagram too sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it's pretty easy. You can get a hold of anybody now. Yeah. Jeez, if you're on Twitter, you can get Trump to Right. Back you know, like, right, right. Crazy. Like, I'm sure you're unresponsive to my fans. Right, yeah. My right. many, many fans. Right. <laughs> no one sends me emails. I have no emails in my inbox right now. Uh, but dude, I appreciate you taking the time. Sure. Um, we'll get a little, we'll go yeah, around do a little here. tour, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it'll be good. All right, guys, so we're just going to do a little tour here. Iron Sports Channel. All right. This is the main weight room here where all the magic happens. We have a giant Smith machine here, which everyone says, oh, Smith machine, you train on the Smith machine? Let me tell you something. You're old and have a million injuries like me. This Smith machine saves your ass. I can do things on this that I cannot do on a barbell comfortably and effectively. So don't knock the Smith machine. We got a couple Elite FTS collegiate racks here with all the bells and whistles and band pegs and everything else. Uh, all the bars you see here, we have a few bars. We have a bunch of Rogue Ohio power bars, which a great bar for the money. Probably the best bar out there for the money. Um, a lot of specialty bars in the corner we really didn't mention. And I have Olympic bars over there, all Lico's and uh, real nice stuff for the Olympic lifters. Over here is our oldest power rack from our, old, from our original gym, the giant old power rack. And here's our brand new Elite FTS model lift we just put in. It's never even been used yet. And uh, we got a Elite FTS combo rack that we've had for a couple years. We just got this in this week. Just put it together, no one's used it yet. This is from Texas Trade Systems, real nice. Nice and tight. Here's our Olympic platforms. All our bumpers in here get pretty beat up. They're all work song bumpers. Where do the dumbbells go up to? Dumbbells go up to 160. Nice. Uh, our competition bench is all Elite FTS. With these, uh, if, in case you ever, this company here makes these bench covers here, highly recommend these things. Cover your benches with them. No slip, protects the bench. They're fucking awesome. They, they're one size fit all, they're great. Um, Elite FTS incline. Here's an Elite FTS belt squat that everybody seems to really like. It's a lot of nice. use. Yeah, I don't think I've actually been to a gym that's had that. Yeah, they have a, a lot. There's a lot of uses, man. You can do a lot of stuff with this thing if you really 
look around. This is our reverse hyper and our one of our newer Elite FTS blue hand rays, which I use a lot. Yeah. A couple of Nebula, we got Nebula leg press, Nebula hack squat, a couple hammer pieces over here. And then we have our cable machine over there. Pretty much everything you need and really nothing you don't need. And I have other, other leg machines and stuff in the other room there. Right. But uh, this, this place has been, we've been here in this building for 21 years, so this place gets, it's yeah. taking a beating, gets, it rocks and rolls in this joint, man. Now you can tell it's been here for a while, but you can also tell you, you keep up to date with everything. Yeah, now. we just actually painted and uh, I think keep everything pretty clean. There it is, and I'm sure you guys have seen this around the internet. This is the guy. <laughs>